back to the story in hand. This isn't a story. It's my story. This is a real story. And uh, don't forget that. This is real. This can't be made up. And uh, I can give you the exact locations. I can drive Dr. Greer and, I, and all of the command, Congress, everyone there, to the bunker. So we passed a dry lake bed on the right-hand side. My driver's side mirror reflected a powerful white light into my eyes. I saw a bright white light pop up of, uh, out of the canyon that I had just come from. I looked over my, my left shoulder and saw a zipping light <sighs> that zipped through the, the, the curves uh, in that bend, mimicking my exact, uh, my exact track and exactly the speed that I had had. <clears throat> Suddenly, all I could see was a bright light through all of my windows, and at that exact same time, my car's power steering and, and the engine's electrical system, everything died, completely died. Uh, when, uh, the, when I exited the vehicle, I rushed towards the front end of the car, believing there was someone pointing a floodlight at us. I had some words to say to that man. I stepped through a thick field of white plasma that encompassed, co encompassed a spheroid craft. As I turned to go inspect my, uh, the craft, my wife opened the door, and she ran out towards the front of the car, and she was yelling, Steve, no. She was instantaneously locked in place in a bright white field of plasma. As I looked at her, I thought to myself, it's okay, she's in stasis lock. That, that plasma enveloped her body with about six inches. I heard a female voice calmly state, felt like it was in my head said, she is in stasis lock. It was a confirmation. Thank you, Dr. Greer. Relieved that she was safe, I started approaching the craft for further inspection. The craft and the car, uh, the craft and the car uh, were nose to nose at a 90 degree formation. Uh, if you looked at it from a bird's eye view, it would be in an L shape, nose to nose. The craft was, uh, there was a plasma field emitting approximately 12 inches off of the craft inside this white plasma field. The craft seemed about Trump, uh, approximately 23 uh, feet long. I stepped forward with my left hand extended and slightly reaching out to it. The craft uh, responded to my movement. Uh, this startled me slightly, but I took it and stood still, uh, just in case. Uh, by moving back and pivoting the nose away from my hand like a cat or a boxer, and it felt like a cat to me. Uh, <sighs> Okay, sorry, lost my place. The exterior looked like uh, polished black onyx. As I approached the craft, I noticed ambient temperature, not hot or cold. Uh, I kind of leaned down and touched the craft, and as I swiped my hand up the craft's starboard side, uh, also towards the front of the craft, uh, it was as smooth as glass. However, when I drew my hand back towards me, it felt like shark skin or a cat's tongue. That was followed by a reaction. Um, the reaction followed my hand, and uh, as I, oh, it, it's slightly off here. Uh, so I'm gonna have to do this with my hands just to describe it for you. As you can see here in the, uh, the, the picture, I, I put my hand on the craft like this, and I kinda pushed my head forward. I can't do it here because of the mic, but I wanted to swipe my hand up and look at it like I was planing a piece of wood. Uh, as I drew my hand back, that's when I felt that this, this strange texture. It felt like a tiger skin, or a tiger, uh, a shark skin, or, or uh, like I said, uh, a cat's tongue. As I drew my hand back, uh, pixels jumped off the craft. Uh, they were like micro shavings. I would call it, it they, they, they resembled graphene or magnetite shavings, and uh, Nano, nano sized particles. As I did that, and as I swiped up first, uh, I guess to get back to that, as I swiped up, the craft emitted a tiger stripe pattern up the, up the starboard side of the craft. As I drew my hand backwards, the pixels popped up. And as I did, the craft purred. It bellowed through my body. I could feel it resonate my body cavity. And uh, it was very intense. I felt like I was in contact with a living creature. Yes, sir. Uh, the reaction, uh, okay, I'm already done with this, thank you. As I, uh, as I drew my hand back, a lattice work opened up underneath. There was a very vibrant color, uh, colors coming out of the craft, the underskin. This was a very thin nanolayer, and uh, there was a meshwork, honeycomb style. 
uh, and it was like a lattice work that was like a frame around this. And beneath that was, uh, well, there were filaments flowing. They looked like a neural network. Uh, there, I, I tried to see any 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 uh, universal bus system or any computer systems as the analyst job that I had. I saw none of this. Uh, as I drew the hand closer to myself, uh, trying to peer through all these bright, wicked, beautiful lights that were pinks, blues, and every light color you could think of in the spectrum, uh, I wasn't able to see anything through it. So as I drew my hand this way, I kind of pressed off the vehicle. The vehicle was stable. I mean, this thing was locked in position. It's not like Star Wars when you jump off of something and it moves. This thing was solidly locked in place, solid. I seen a shape right here under my, through my elbow. Uh, as I as I leaned my face down, and I could see up into the sky above my car, a mirage, which was like a silhouette or a heat foil on the road, and uh, the the stars shimmered in a straight line, and in and in a very long distance there was a curve. So it looked seemed to be curved. Either way, right when that ripple hit in the sky, uh, the stars then refixed back into place. I realized I was looking at a cloaking device on a very, very, very large craft that seemed to encompass the whole desert area that I was under. Uh, at that moment in time, I then uh, I glanced and panned my view just to try to get the, you know, uh, fathom the dimensions of this craft. And I saw a giant white, bright white light uh, floating in the sky. And it was a hangar bay door opened uh, couldn't see doors. It was just a bright white light. And it looked like a window floating through the sky, maybe even a portal. People might, from a distance, think, hey, that's a portal. But I obviously knew it was a craft. So this is a hangar bay door. And there was a female uh, silhouette standing there. Uh, at that moment in time, I, seen that, I heard that same voice. Uh, and it said very clearly, um, you were not supposed to see that. That, you weren't supposed to see it. All of a sudden, I began feeling a thud, thud, thud sound. Uh, this was a resonant frequency being pulsed through my body. Uh, as I felt this, uh, it increased in speed, thud, 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 thud. It was very rapid. You can see the same type of thing in the movie Interstellar, very similar when he falls through the black hole. Uh, too similar, too similar. Uh, <clears throat> As these, this thud resonated my body, I felt my molecular or my cells, uh, maybe the quantum level of my body, feel like it was being resonated. I felt like maybe I'm going to be microwaved uh, or something to that nature. Either way, I seen some bands coming through. I began lifting up off the ground. My vehicle began lifting with me also. As this happened, my body tipped back, and I could see the underbelly of the craft. You're going to see that design right in front of you. Uh, this, the rectangular shape right in the center there looked like a docking socket for an electrical port. If you're gonna take a, you know, a big, big, big uh, uh, male end, um, this would be the female recepting it, receiving end uh, for an electrical charger. Uh, to skip through that, there were some very, very, uh, there's some highlighted uh, parts here. Um, and as you can read them there, I'm gonna let you read that for yourself just for time's uh, sake. Uh, however, uh, as this happened uh, instantaneously, I queued in and I was flat on my back, and I was staring up at the ceiling, uh, and my vision cued into a very, very bright white light. My vision panned over, and there was my wife flat on her back on a table. It was smaller than the table I was laying on, slightly lowered, and she still had the same exact expression on her face like she was screaming no. However, she was no longer stuck in the running position. She was flat. As I panned a little, a little more in front of me to kind of gauge where I was at, and this all happened in milliseconds, guys. This was whole crap on um, what's happening. So this is a very short encounter here. As I panned over, I saw my vehicle with the right, the right uh, passenger tires end uh, lifted up. I saw some people in some white suits, fully, fully garmented masks with some breathing apparatuses. Uh, they were working on the vehicle. Slightly next to that was a strange blue rack that looked like it could have been an automotive rack, could have had another purpose. That was my quick assumption. As I, as I, oh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, yes, sir. So uh, after that had happened, uh, I saw a female right next to me. She was taking some samples from me. It was a human female. She had red hair. Uh, she had very fair skin. Uh, and uh, after that moment, I also, as I panned over, I could see the window and the desert behind me. I realized we were not in space. I could see the desert floor. 
I can see the exact two rock formations and one far off in the, in the distance. Uh, so this is pinpointed by, by GPS coordinates. So uh, after that, uh, I panned a little more over, and as I seen this open up, uh, and the bay, the bay door behind her open, or maybe just transparent, and I could see out. Uh, I, I also seen that craft right here docked in the ship, and that came through me after trying to get these schematics done on paper while talking to Michael Scratch. So thank you, sir. This man went through PTSD <laughs> with me. So thank you, Doctor. Awesome. <laughs> 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 <laughs>